Hey, let's talk about pressure cooking. Let's talk about a while supplies last from Cooks Essentials. We debuted this earlier this month, and already this month alone, we have taken orders for 4,200 of this while supplies last six and a half quart round stainless steel pressure cooker from Cooks Essentials. And I will tell you, we have it in this beautiful copper. I have it for you in stainless steel. And I also have it for you in the red. Six and a half quart capacity. And what do we know to be true about pressure cooking? Two things. One, you're going to cook much faster than traditional methods of cooking. And secondly, you're going to infuse the flavor of whatever you've put inside your recipe into every single bite. And if you've always been afraid of pressure cookers because the ones you grew up with were stove tops and they whistled and hissed and you weren't allowed anywhere near it, this one is super safe. Multiple, multiple backups to make sure that all of this is safe for you. In fact, it is impossible to lift this lid is while it's still under pressure. Let's go over and meet Meredith Lawrence. She's our Cook's Essentials representative, and she's going to give you a little crash course in pressure cooking, and I'm going to do a whole lot of eating. Yes, yes I am. Are. How are you, my we friend? We have a lot of food ready for you. We here. do indeed. May I also say, Meredith has written a pressure cooking cookbook. It's called Comfortable Under Pressure. It's Meredith's second book. Yes. What you should know about Meredith, in addition to being a true and trained chef, she has also for years been a home cooking instructor. Mm -hmm. So she is uniquely qualified to take all of her chef training and break it down into terms that we home cooks can understand. Well, I hope so. Well, you certainly have. You've taught you taught me a lot over the Thank years. You. I'll tell you, this book is awesome. It is a separate purchase. Ask your operators about it. We'll tell you more about that. But Meredith, let's get busy with my favorite. We mm. always start with your favorite, David, and that is, of course, the true pot roast. And the reason we like to do a pot roast in a pressure cooker is because pot roast is a delicious cut of meat. Usually, oh. I know, look at that. It smells I like heaven. I feel I could here. look at this pot roast and it would crumble like that. It's so tender. And the reason we like to do it in a pressure cooker, David, is because a pot roast, you use a tougher piece of meat, like a chuck roast, and it takes time oh, to really make that tender. Smells so good. Yeah, I got you covered. Thank you. I was hoping you'd say there that. There you go. Um, it takes a lot of time to make that beautiful pot roast tender and delicious, but not in a pressure cooker because what pressure cookers do is they actually trap the steam, building the pressure inside the vessel, trapping mm -hmm. it there, making the water boil at a higher temperature, right. and therefore cooking foods in one third of the time it normally takes. So if you are used to making a pot roast and you keep it on the stove or in the oven for four to five hours, forget about it. This was done in 60 minutes. Mm. In this pressure cooker, mm. and it is tender. It is delicious. It happy is, dance! Happy dance! First one of the show, man. It is a that very is a pot roast happy dance. Very happy, happy pot roast. I have to tell you, growing up, mom made pot roast probably twice a month for Sunday dinner. It was our favorite as uh -huh. a family, but mom would cook hers four and a half hours on exactly, the stove top. Exactly. It took forever for it to get this. And how fast did this cook? 60 minutes. 60 minutes. Yeah, so wow. one hour, easy, easy to do. And you know what? It's not occupied time. It's not like you're standing there watching it for 60 mm. minutes. You put it in mm. there, you walk away. 60 minutes later, it's done. And David, this mm. pressure cooker mm. in itself has mm. been so popular this month mm -hmm. because I have to say it's one of the easiest pressure cookers we have ever produced. There are no buttons. These are not buttons. These are just lights. There's only one dial to turn. You turn it to the amount of time that you want a pressure cooker. You put the lid on, you lock it, and you are done. Here's the best part. If you have any leftovers, which is probably doubtful, but if you have any leftovers the next day, take some nice crusty bread or even just regular sandwich bread. Put it on a plate. Uh -huh. Spread that pot roast over top and put some hot gravy on there, make it a hot open face sandwich. And I gotta tell you, I think if you're making pot roast, you need to make enough so that you have Whoa. leftovers the next hot day. Hot open face sandwich the next day on some of that yummy soft white bread and all that gravy. Come on! Now, right. David, over here is something like you're wondering, well, well, what am I gonna make in a pressure cooker? I'm gonna tell you how easy it is okay. because here is a very simple thing that anybody can do. We actually managed to get two whole chickens in here. Look at this. And I, I, I won't even try to get it out whole because it's so tender at this point that it's gonna come out in pieces. But we put two whole chickens in there with some jarred marinara sauce. A little bit of stock, almost equal parts, stock and marinara sauce, a few herbs and spices, whatever you have in the in the kitchen. And then we put it on to uh, high heat for 35 minutes. And look what we come up with. We come up with not only delicious chicken like this that is super flavorful and super moist and extraordinarily tender. Look, the breast meat just came right off there in the tongs. But you're left with a broth behind that has all the flavor of that mm. chicken plus the herbs and the marinara that you started with. So you're making more than one meal here. You're getting the great chicken. Out. Look at that. Look at the bone. Look. It just falls what apart. What the heck? My mother stewed so many chickens in her pressure cooker growing up because it was just an inexpensive meal.
right. that you could just keep giving for a couple of days. Well, exactly. Let's check this out. Once you've got the chicken out of there, maybe you have a little bit of leftover rice, or here we have a little leftover orzo, and you just put that that broth over and the make top. A little soup. Look at that soup you've got. Oh, like so delightful. you have got a couple meals here at the very least. A pressure cooker also by the way if you're making chicken for a chicken pot pie or in my case for my little dog. I always cook her chicken. For Sadie Sadie I, Pumpkin Sadie, Lady. Sadie Sadie Pumpkin Lady gets a little chicken right I in love here Marisol and it's Marisol done. Puppy Sadie. Done hey, in seconds. May I tell you and remind you that this is a while while supplies last, it is also on three pay tonight. This is a $69 item on three easy payments. I can tell you in the almost 21 years I've been at QVC, it is difficult to find a $69 item on easy pay at all, much less three. So we're going to bring this to you tonight on three easy payments. Let me talk about colors again real quickly and tell you that we have this for you in cinnamon. Excuse me, we're calling that red, aren't we? Red. Red. We have it in stainless steel. And finally, we have it in copper. It's on three easy payments tonight. This is a six and a half quart round nonstick pressure cooker that is electric, safe, easy to use, and best of all, tonight it's on easy pay. But I need to let you know also, we do not have an unlimited supply of this, and already over 4,600 of these ordered just this month. And so when that quantity has been exhausted, this item, this price, this easy pay, it all disappears. And we are just on the cusp of comfort food season. Oh, we are just you know on the it. cusp of fall and autumn and all the delicious cooking. And later this year, when you come home at the end of a long day and, and it's chilly rushed. and you're rushed and the family is starving, when dinner can be made in 30 minutes in your pressure cooker, you'll be glad you bought this tonight on the 20th of August. And you know, despite the fact that it saves you so much time, I think the real reason to get a pressure cooker is honestly, the food out of it is incredible. And in fact, here, we're not just waiting for fall season. It is corn season right here, right now. You better believe it is. And here's a great way to make corn on the cob. Look, I just put some seasoned butter. So I actually just mashed sun dried tomatoes and basil into that butter with a little bit of salt. I'm wrapping it up, wrapping the corn, ear of corn up like this. And then here's an easy way to make a rack for the inside of your pressure cooker. Just roll up some tin foil, throw that in the bottom. We're going to put about a cup to two cups oh. of water in there. I was just having a little pot roast. There he goes again. You mm -hmm. can't trust him. It mm. happens all the time. Mm. And in mm. goes the, the uh, corn on the cob. You put it in here for three to four minutes, and that corn is done. Okay, so this is how simple it is to use. Corn in there. You lock this on by matching up the arrows. Lock it. Make sure this valve is down, set to pressure. And then you go down to this dial. This is the only thing you have to do. That's the only control on the whole mechanism. You turn it to about two minutes. And then you let it go. And there's That's no it. no worry about putting the uh, aluminum foil down inside the pressure cooker. No, no, awesome. no. That is just you, if you have a rack that fits that like great. If you don't have a rack, just use the foil. It is no big deal. Look at these reds. I know. Here, this is what is going to get devoured right after you leave this set, David, because <laughs> everybody comes over and they just start eating. And I have to tell you, this is what actually I devoured last time that I was here with the pressure cooker are the ribs. The ribs are delicious. You can simply take ribs, take barbecue sauce, add a little bit of stock to it, and go ahead and cook these. It takes about 25 minutes. You can go a little longer if you want them falling off the bone like this. But this is something that would take you hours if you were doing it in the oven, and then you'd have to get the barbecue sauce on the stove top and then maybe put them on the grill or whatever. So these things can be done easily, quickly. It's contained, and David, when all the pressure is done here, it goes directly into a keep warm mode. So no matter what it's time. Like a, it's, then it's a, a warm or, or a buffet pot. Exactly. exactly. Well, I'll tell you, we are really getting busy on our phone lines. And I can tell you now over 5,000 have been ordered. That means in this show alone, we've already taken orders for. Over 800 are gone. What colors do I have for you? I have this in stainless steel. I can tell you from experience, stainless steel tends to be our most popular color. I would not wait if you want the stainless steel. Copper has emerged as one of the biggest new trends in kitchen decor. And copper, uh, while it's not a new thing to the kitchen because for years we had copper bottom pots, right. copper as a decorative color, coming on really, really strong in the last few years. And then we have it for you in the red. Now, Meredith's book, Comfortable Under Pressure, does not come with your purchase tonight. It is available separately. But I can tell you, having uh, cooked from lots and lots of cookbooks, I own both of Meredith's books. They are marvelous books. Her recipes are easy, and they're also wonderful. Well, so let you. me highly recommend Meredith's book if you are thinking about picking that up tonight as a companion to your new pressure cooker. How about, I was going to say a little paella, well, but that's not a little paella. We're going for a lot. And the reason I like this paella recipe is in the cookbook, David. And this is a four-minute 
paella. Nice. So you've got shrimp in there, mussels, clam, little sausage. It is beautiful, easy, and the rice, dry grain rice goes all goes in there. And four minutes later, you come out with this beautiful. Look at that. It's unbelievable. At that. And I'll tell you, whatever Who spices you think? put inside and whatever flavor comes from the seafood gets infused into every bit of that rice. So every single bite is marvelous. Now, this next recipe is one of my favorites. <laughs> Merit this is in the book, isn't it, Meredith? This is absolutely in yeah, the book. This is Meredith's rigatoni and sausage and sun dried tomatoes. Oh my word, this is one of the best recipes I've ever put in my mouth. And, David, the thing about this recipe is that you put the pasta in here dry. Dry so pasta. So it cooks from dry. It cooks right in there along with the sauce. So it is a six or seven minute, forgive me for not remembering, but I think it's a six <laughs> minute, six minute recipe. That wow. to me is fantastic because that's a delicious pasta mm. that I love to have. Mm -hmm. The fact that I don't have to wait for the water to boil to cook the pasta, make the sauce separately, add them all together, that's a huge time saver, but you lose nothing with flavor. The pasta is perfectly al dente. Oh my goodness, it's just perfect. This is one of my favorite recipes from your book. Oh, thank you so mm, much. Yummy. And here's another one, which I think is so much summertime, although I'm going to be starting to mix this up and show you some other things. But this is a risotto. You can do a risotto in the pressure cooker in about 12 minutes, where you're usually standing over the stove uh, and, you know, and stirring for a long time. This rice pudding, pineapple. And coconut. You should call this pina colada rice pudding. I know pudding. I don't. I don't know why I didn't. It's like it's like someone dumped a pina colada over rice, and that's what you've got because it's that delicious. And it makes you happy. And Meredith garnishes it with toasted pineapple, or excuse me, toasted coconut, which is one of my favorite. A little bit flavors. of crunch to it. Oh, and just that kind of a just that little bit of cooked flavor there on but top. But you see, perfect. once you get the basic premise for a rice pudding like this, mm. or for a risotto, or good. for a paella, you can mix up those ingredients. You only need to know is the mm. timing and the quantities, mm. and then you. Yes. It's the pineapple. You I get know. a big burst of bright every time you get a, you hit a little piece of pineapple with in the this, creamy in this, rice, and then the creamy is kind of the foundation, and then the, and the pineapple pops, and then you get the crunch of that toasted coconut. Wow, is this good! See, now see, this is, this recipe is also in the book. That yes? is also in the book. Yes, you know, and and it was so much fun to do the book because I actually convinced so many of my friends who were a little bit apprehensive about pressure cooking. They said, "Oh, I don't know," but I said, "You know what? Give it a try. Just test this recipe. Make sure you tell me if you like it or not." They were converts. They said, "Oh my goodness, I am totally into the pressure cooking now. It makes great food." That's the number one. The number two is that it saves you. You can cook things in a third of the time. That's like a supreme bonus. But honestly, I've got to tell you, my main reason for pressure cooking is the food tastes great. It does. And let me say, already over 600 of Meredith's books are gone. I can highly recommend this. Beautiful color photos inside the book. How many total recipes, Em? 125. 125. And remember, Meredith is not only a trained chef, she is also a home cooking instructor. So it's like she's in your kitchen with you, teaching you to pressure cook for the first time if you've never done it before, or giving you some new recipes to add to your arsenal. Now, what colors do I have for you? I have it for you in red, I have it in copper, and I have it in the stainless steel. I do need to let you know stainless steel is the most popular color today. May I also tell you and remind you, this is a while supplies last. So it only lasts while the supply does. And now, since we launched it, how many ordered, Gabe? Over 6,000. That means in this show alone, over 1,800 wow. of these are gone. Everybody's loving the Easy Pay, and I can tell you, after almost 21 years at QVC, to find a $69 item on Easy Pay at all, but then to put it on three, well, you are lucky to be shopping tonight. <laughs> and if you need a pressure cooker, this is the one you want to go for. I own a Cook's Essentials pressure cooker. I use mine all the time. I have the four quart. Mm -hmm. I think I need to upgrade to a six and a half quart because you this just allows it. me to do even more cooking. Meredith always tells us. You can do less in a big pressure cooker, but you can't do more in a smaller one. So go ahead and get the bigger size, and I think you'll be awfully glad you did. Hey, Meredith, before we let you go, yes, I have some trivia for you. Okay, I'm ready. Which I know you must be terribly excited about. I'm ready. All right, here we go. We're making my vegetable pad thai tonight. Mm -hmm. So true or false? Original pad thai recipes took up to three days to make. Is that true or false? I say true. It is actually false. Oh. Pad Thai may have been Thailand's first fast food, according to Quartz. The dish was invented in the 1930s, it says, when the country was in an economic depression. Noodles were cheap and veggies were both accessible and nutritious. With the addition of an inexpensive protein, it became a complete meal. I was trying to make you look good, that you were doing it so fast and snappy. And it well, used we to take made three an easy days, version. People. Yeah. But you know what? It's actually uh, Thailand's version of fast food. I love Their it. first version of fast it's food.